This video will highlight the origins of the atomic bombs, the events leading up to their employment, and then conclude with discussion points, advocating positions both for the bomb's usage and against the bomb's usage. Because the dropping of the bombs are still considered a contentious issue today, we will explore both perspectives and then later proceed with the class debate. So the agenda for this video is to first examine a chronology of events leading up to the bomb's employment, discuss and explore the Manhattan Project, present a two-sided approach that can help us when we have our class debate, and then understand important events about the dropping of the weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So let's start with the chronology. Japan had begun their war in Asia in 1931, but it wasn't until 1941 when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor that the United States entered the war. 1942 was the turning point in the Pacific Theater. The United States began a series of island hopping campaigns from 42 to 45 then, and the dropping of the two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki effectively ended the war. So turning to the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was the code name for the development of the atomic bomb. It all started in 1939, when U.S. officials began to believe that German scientists had learned how to successfully split a uranium atom. This isn't chemistry class, but the way that I understand this is it basically means that the Germans had kind of discovered the roadmap or the blueprint for how to create an atomic weapon. It was Albert Einstein, who you'll recognize, and Enrico Fermi, two European refugees who fled from Europe and then warned that the United States should begin its own atomic war program in order to stay ahead of a nascent arms race that began to develop. So the arms race, or the development of the atomic bomb, did begin to happen, and it started off in famous universities like Columbia and the University of Chicago, but it was later moved to Los Alamos, New Mexico, in order to be kept secret. The project employed over 120,000 employees, but only a select few members actually knew that a weapon was being created. Joseph Stalin, a wartime ally of the United States, didn't know about the project. In fact, Vice President Truman didn't even know that an atomic bomb was being created until he assumed the presidency in 1945. So the creation of the atomic bomb progressed, and then on July 16, 1945, a bomb was successfully tested. The chief director of the Manhattan Project was Dr. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, sometimes known as the father of the atomic bomb. Here's a quote that he said that we discussed in class. You can pause the video here if you like. This is the extent of a, a 1965 interview where he talked about what he said. It's a pretty notable quote that we discussed in class. So the weapon was created, but then questions began to arise as to whether the United States should use it. So what was going on before the bomb was dropped? In, in February and April of 1945, the United States encountered two of its bloodiest battles in the war and on Iwo Jima and Okinawa where US uh, encountered high numbers of casualties and the Japanese encountered even higher numbers of casualties. In August of 1945 when invasion of the mainland was being prepared it was estimated that an invasion would cost over a million American servicemen and women lives and even more Japanese lives. So why were these battles so difficult? Well, here's a map of Iwo Jima on the left, and here's Okinawa. You'll notice the proximity of the two islands to those four mainland Japanese islands. In Iwo Jima and Okinawa, unlike Guadalcanal or Mindanao or Midway, um, Iwo Jima and Okinawa were Japanese islands. They were Japanese territory, and they were sovereign to the Japanese people. So the fighting would be much more intense and severe on these islands, hence the larger number of casualties. So let's move on to a two-sided approach as to whether the weapon should be used. In July and August of 45, then, uh, U.S. top officials were debating, should the weapon be used on the Japanese mainland so as to uh, shorten the war? So here are some of the explanations we looked at in class. Let's take two of the pro-bomb approaches briefly. One was that the bomb will save American and Japanese lives. This sounds a little bit funny or contradictory at first, but here's the rationale behind it. If you use a bomb, you take thousands of lives. But if you invade Japan, you end up with millions of casualties lost. So it's 
somewhat of a utilitarian approach in that you take the best option that's given to you, which the options aren't very good. The second was the Potsdam Declaration in 1945, where effectively the Allies had warned Japan, had begun to hint that they had an atomic weapon, and that Japan should surrender before the weapon would be used. Therefore, because Japan didn't surrender, you can justify the usage of the bomb. Two anti-bomb approaches. One was that uh, the bomb should actually be used for defensive purposes rather than offensive purposes. This was a position advocated uh, notably by some of the bomb's leading developers who, who said that because um, the U.S. territory wasn't uh, at risk of being invasion and, and the war in Europe was over, so the weapon shouldn't be used for an offensive purpose to win the war, but rather should be reserved for defensive purposes. Another was that the bomb was illegal by international standards. Several decades earlier, the then League of Nations had said that should an atomic weapon be developed, it shouldn't be used. The United States and the world should come to an agreement that such weapons are inhumane and have no place in the 20th, 20th century. These are just a few examples then, so one of our class assignments was to come up with additional explanations, either advocating for the bomb's usage or against the bomb's usage. You can practice some of these and you can use these to prep for our debate, which will begin later next week. Now let's move on to the final part of our agenda. As you know, the two atomic bombs were used first on August 6, 1945, a code or excuse me, a plane called the Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb codenamed Little Boy on Hiroshima, Japan. It's estimated that around 70,000 people were killed. Three days later, on August 9, 1945, a second atomic bomb codenamed Fat Boy is dropped on Nagasaki. Again, accounts vary, but an estimated 40,000 people were killed. Here are two poignant photos, first of Hiroshima, and of Nagasaki during the bomb's aftermath. Here are additional links that you can use to study the dropping of the two atomic bombs further.